Right, hi guys, and welcome back to The Cruel Room. We're here once again in this wonderful ranty room for all things Formula One. And there is no F1 racing this weekend, which is quite a surprise after yet another triple header. So I thought, time to do an update on how I think the teams have been going so far this season and uh, assess them after their next three races. We did it for the first three rounds, and now we're going to do it for the next three rounds. Have any teams improved? Have any teams gone backwards? Let's find out. So, of course, we're going to kick things off with the current championship leaders, and that is Mercedes. Well, everything's in the bag for them now, isn't it? We've had another few wins. We've had countless everything, polls, and, yeah, it's just an easy one for them, really. Um, but to assess them and to judge them fairly, we've really got to look at the uh, Silverstone Grand Prix where they have the double tyre failure on both cars. Bottas a few laps from the end and Hamilton on the last lap. Now that could have cost them the win that weekend had Red Bull decided not to pit. That would have been a Red Bull win, <clears throat> definitely. So of course you've got to mark them down for that. Clearly there was something, we could see the tyre explosions for other teams but they were the only team to have a double tyre failure on both cars. So... In that sense, you've got to think they were pushing it with the tyre pressures a little bit or perhaps um, pushing it just ever so slightly in terms of the camber that they were using on the car. And when you think about it, when they're so far ahead, do they really need to risk it? Well, that's one of those things, isn't it? And of course, then they maybe went too conservatively in the 70th anniversary Grand Prix because that's when Max Verstappen took full advantage and Red Bull had a brilliant strategy and they won the race there. So... To summarise what Mercedes have done, it's more dominance yet again, it's clear to see we've been lining up 1-2 on the grid all the time again of course, and in the races we've been winning them except for that 70th anniversary race. So yeah, it's, it's an interesting one because yes they are so dominant and yes they are in the lead, but they have made mistakes these three races. So for that reason I'm going to award Mercedes 8 points. I think eight points is fair judging the tyre failures that they did have. And if Hamilton had lost that win due to a tyre failure, then I'd have certainly been docking them a lot more points. Um, a strategic error on their part, really, as to why it even failed. Because once Max had pitted, then without a doubt, Mercedes could have pitted and Hamilton had come out well ahead anyway. So a strange one there. But yeah, eight points, I think, for Mercedes is fair. It's a reflection of how they've shown their dominance, but they have made mistakes. And then we come to Red Bull, and what can be said for them? Well, I think, you know, we've just got to say Max Verstappen, really, haven't we? I think that I think they've done really well as a team these last three races, with Max in particular. Um, of course, Max hasn't finished lower than second these three races, so he's split a Mercedes every time. Of course, that meant to beat Bottas in Silverstone, as we mentioned, Bottas having that tyre failure. And in the 17th anniversary race, they actually won with a cracking strategy and some cracking driving by Max. So a great team effort there. And then, of course, at the last round in Spain, Max getting the better of Bottas once again and splitting those Mercedes across the line to take P2. So they have done a really, really, really fantastic job with that car. With that car, we're in the hands of Max. They've done brilliant. But then we come to Alex Albon and he struggled. We've had an eighth, a fifth and another eighth. Not really Red Bull worthy, that is it, to be honest with you. But I've got to commend Red Bull on the fact that they've brought in some new engineers and they've brought in uh, another guy in to help coach Albon to get the most out of the car. So it seems like they're putting the effort in that they didn't put in with Gasly. Gasly were just like, there you go, Gasly, win races in that. Oh, you're not, we'll bin you off. Whereas I think they've kind of understood a little bit more now that the car is very much built around Max and it's not to every driver's liking. So... Max is a special kind of guy, we know that. Max is, you know, future world champion in waiting, and I'm going to say it again, give him that Mercedes car tomorrow, he will win the rest of the races and beat Hamilton hands down. I just know it. I think we all can mutually agree on that as well, to be honest. But there's going to be some that don't. And that's fair enough. But for Alex, at least they're giving him the support, but they're doing silly things with um, the tyre strategies, like putting him on the hards in Spain. That just completely ruined his race. But Albon leaves him in a situation where they've got to try something different because he's not ahead of the racing points or because he's behind traffic or things like that. So for Red Bull, it, they've had a fantastic last three races, don't get me wrong, with the hands of Max. But Albon's kind of slipped back a little bit. He has slipped back a touch. But nonetheless, I think Albon has done some cracking overtakes when he's qualified out of position. 
and Red Bull are giving him the full support now, it seems, anyway. It appears on the surface that they're trying to do what they can. So for Red Bull, I'm going to award them nine points. I'm not going to award them a perfect ten just because of the Albon situation, but hands down, faultless in, the t in terms of Max and the Red Bull team. So Max and Red Bull, ten points all day long. But Albon, yeah, you're showing him some love now, but get the strategies right with his car as well. So nine points to Red Bull. And then, of course, it's racing points turn, and these last three races for them have been a bit strange with having Hulkenberg in the car for two of them instead of Sergio Perez after Sergio tested positive for coronavirus. So, yeah, they've had a bit of a mix-up there. On the Wednesday afternoon, they were like, shit, we ain't going to drive her. Then, and then Hulkenberg was drafted in from Monaco. They are like, right, you're uh, not having your barbecue at the weekend, pal. You're in a racing car around Silverstone. Great stuff. Um, and, yeah... They've, they've honestly done a solid job racing point these last few races. Bearing in mind, I know we've had all the controversy with the brake ducks and whatever else. I'm not getting into that here because that's just for the FIA to sort out for months on end and drag it out as long as they can. But for the team itself, what a fantastic job they've done. We had a 4th and 5th place finish at Spain. We had a 6th and 7th place finish at the uh, 70th anniversary race. The tyres apparently were cut on... Uh, and slashed and really close to exploding on Olkenberg's car, which is why they pitted him at the end from fifth in that race, but uh, I'm not ever too sure about that. And, of course, at the, at the Silverstone Grand Prix, the first race, Olkenberg was back, the car didn't start, and he was out of the race before it even began. So a DNS. So overall, some fantastic brace of points, and they put them third in the Constructors' Championship. This is after a 15-point deduction as well, let's not forget. So... Fantastic effort by them, and uh, for that reason, I'm going to award Racing Point nine points. I think they've done a solid job. These last few races have been a solid job, and the only reason why they're not getting a perfect tent is because Hulkenberg didn't get out of the uh, Silverstone Grand Prix. Had he got out, he'd have scored more points, and also for the pit stop happened in the 70th anniversary Grand Prix. Whether he had cuts to his tyres or not, pitting him with two laps left to go is just a little bit suspect for letting Daddy race in ahead of Hulkenberg to be honest but you know that's just the conspiracy theorist inside me but I'm not taking anything away from them a solid nine points for racing point and then we come to McLaren and what could be said about them they've not had the most extraordinary last three races the first three of course we were having podiums and we had fifth place finishes and we had some really really fiery last laps these last three races haven't really been like that the only drama that we have had at the end of the race has been obviously sites at the silverstone grand prix having his tire explosion from sixth place on the grid and tumbling down the order out of the points and last race with the sixth for science and tenth for norris was their first double points finish was actually their first double points finish in styria which was the second round so in those three races, of course, we had the tyre failure for Sainz while he was inside the points at the uh, Silverstone Grand Prix. And then we've just had a general lack of pace from both drivers at the Silverstone Grand Prix and, of course, the Hungarian Grand Prix, which was reviewed on last time around in those three races. And, yeah, it's just a weird one to think that after such a strong start, we've only had yet another double points finish now. Um, yeah, it's a really odd one. Uh, the pace is there, the car's there, they've been qualifying well, been getting into Q3 more often than not. Science was the first car to go out in a Q2 round at this round, I believe it was, at Spain. Um, so, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a bit of a mixed bag this time around by McLaren, but once again, they're consolidating what they've got, the scoring points when they can, and... And of course the sudden turn of pace with Racing Point hasn't held things because Racing Point weren't really doing that well in the first few rounds. They kept tripping up over each other and having silly things going on. So these last three races, Racing Point have consolidated that. Both cars up there pushes the McLarens down a little bit. So, so for McLaren, a solid enough three races, but nothing special that we saw in the first three races. I think we've kind of seen where the car's pace is now. So for that reason, I'm going to award McLaren seven points. I think it's been a strong-ish uh, middle part of the season so far. These group of three races that I'm judging on, I think they've done an okay job. Seven points is fair for that, and hopefully in the next three races we can get a bit of, bit of a bigger picture as to where that pace is. So, uh, yeah, seven points to McLaren. So next up on this list is, of course, Ferrari. And who would have thought Ferrari would be languishing fifth in the constructors at this moment in time? in the championship after six races 
they're really struggling, aren't they? Let's be honest. We have, of course, seen yet one more podium for the uh, Ferrari team in the shape of Charles Leclerc finishing third at the Silverstone Grand Prix. But apart from that, we've not really seen anything special. We've seen a masterclass by Vettel, of course, in that Spanish Grand Prix, making those soft tyres last 37-something laps. But a miscommunication by Ferrari put him in that situation. So I'm not commending Ferrari for that at all. I'm commending Vettel for bringing that car home in seventh. And yeah, uh, overall, it's just been yet more meh. You know, Vettel's not been delivering. He just delivered this round. Leclerc had a failure, of course, this time around as well at the Spanish Grand Prix. And then his seatbelts came undone. Um, so yeah, it's just been a meh again, once again, by Ferrari. You're just watching them and you're just disappointed looking at the car languishing around in nowhere. P nowhere, really. Um, so, short and sweet with Ferrari. It's going to be... Three points to them. I think they've done really badly. And, yeah, I don't think a podium at Silverstone is really going to save you from how bad the rest of the season has been so far, to be honest. And the fact that you're languishing behind the lights of McLaren Racing Point, it's not on, is it? It's really not on. You're a manufacturer team, for God's sake, that's been in the sport since its beginning. And here we are, P nowhere. So, yeah. Just three points for Ferrari. And then we come to Renault. And yeah, a bit of a funny one. We've had a really strong result. And then we've had a really poor result in these last three races. And then a kind of mediocre result which they've always been getting. Now, they're obsessed with eighth places. So they had an eighth place at the 17th anniversary Grand Prix. And that was it. Uh, pretty much like what they had the first three races of this season. Just eighth places. Um, and then you come to the... Silverstone Grand Prix, we assess the Silverstone Grand Prix, the 4th and 6th. A massive points all there for Renault, and you think, great, things are really picking up. Then we come to Spain, and they're outside the points, both cars. That's their first non-points finish this season. So, a bit of a shame there. But nonetheless, just one of those things, I guess. You know, they just, they just didn't have the pace. Ocon was really bad around uh, Spain as well, to be fair. And considering it's a circuit where the drivers do all the testing, of course, we've had seven days prior to the lockdown and prior to the coronavirus outbreak. You know, they did seven days of testing there. So the cars are dialed in for this circuit. And 11th and 13th was the best they could get, which is a little bit concerning. Yeah, it's just a strange one, really. So, you know, the highs of Silverstone, the OK, that's what we kind of get of the 70th anniversary Grand Prix. And then the lows of Spain, of Pino, where, uh, yeah. It's a difficult one to judge. And so for Renault, of course, sixth in the Constructors' Championship is not what they're going to want, especially being behind the likes of McLaren and Racing Point. They could have fully expected to be behind Ferrari, but the way Ferrari have been, I would have expected Renault to be ahead of them because Ferrari have been so bad, it's unbelievable. Um, but yeah, Renault, a difficult one. Yeah, I think I'm really going to score them a middle-of-the-road five because we've seen the highs, we've seen the lows, and we've seen the averages. And these next three races coming up now, I think we need to see where their pace really is. Is it the just average around P8, or are we going to see some more special results of a double points finish that's high up in the order? So, we'll wait and see on that, but five points for Renault at the moment. And then we come to the Alfa Tori team in P7 in the Constructors' Championship, with 16 points on the board now, after some more points finishes from Gaslit and one solitary point from Kvyat, courtesy of the 70th, 70th Grand Prix, 10th place finish. Yeah, it's been okay by Alpha Tyre once again. It's been decent, it's been okay, but they've not had a double points finish yet, and they've come so close with a P10 and a P11, or a P9 and a P11, so they've been nearly there, but just not quite, and I think that's what we need to see from them going into the next three races now. Of course, the teams behind them are Alfa Romeo, Haas and Williams, so they're not really going to be a great threat to them because they, they're just struggling to get outside the top 15, let alone get into the points. So Alpha Tori are safe and comfortable with P7 at the moment, let's be honest. They are safe. But it would be nice to see them make a little bit more gains, get some more points finishes on the board and start getting some double points finishes as well because both drivers have proved they're capable of delivering the points. And, yeah, I think we need to see that now. That's what we need to see. Both drivers are capable. The car's clearly capable. Let's get both cars up there and let's get some points on the board. And some solid points at that as well. Of course, Gasly had a P7 finish at the Silverstone Grand Prix, benefiting highly from the um, punctures ahead and failures. But Alfa Tauri didn't suffer them, so that's fair play to them. And then, of course, the single solitary point in the... Um, 
70th anniversary Grand Prix and then a P8 finish once again in the Spanish Grand Prix. So a, a good points all, but just not a two car finish in the points, which is what we need next to see a little bit more improvement from them. So for that reason, I'm going to award Alpha Tori seven points. I think they've done a cracking job with the car that they've got. The drivers have done well on their own day, on their personal day. The drivers have had their day and they've done brilliant. Gasly more so than Kavia. But both cars have proved that they're capable of scoring points. So let's go forward. Let's get some points on the board. Double points finishes for the next three races. And I'll be able to score you more highly going forward. Then as mentioned, we come to the last three teams really that are struggling to get any sort of points. And it's the Alfa Romeo team next with two points on the board in P8 in the Constructors. No points from these three races, of course. They've really struggled. They've been really, really back of the grid, to be honest with you, these last few uh, but the most notable performance was at Spain, the last race out, where Kimi Raikkonen got them out of Q1 for the first time this season and qualified P14, and after an upside-down topsy-turvy race, he finished the race in P14 as well, keeping the likes of Esteban Ocon behind him for quite a number of laps in the Renault. He did a solid job. That was my driver of the day for Spain. And it was nice to see Alfa Romeo mixing it up there. They were battling with the Haas, they were battling with the Renault, and like I said, battling with a Renault as well, which is fantastic. So, brilliant effort in that sense, but the rest of the season has been very much meh. A big step back from uh, Alfa Romeo. When we looked at them um, in 2018, we could see progress from the 2017 season. 2019, we saw yet more progress, although the word dying off to the end of 2019. 2020 has come around, the engine doesn't help, and they are firmly the last team, really, in terms of pace. They've lined up 19th and 20th more than any other team on the grid so far this season. So that's a big indication as to where their pace is. So in that respect, for them to be 8th, picking up two lucky points at the Austrian Grand Prix, the first round, is a bit of consolation, but overall these last three races haven't really shown what they're clearly capable of, apart from that one good race by Raikkonen. So yeah, unfortunately for Alfa Romeo, I'm just going to award them six points. It was going to be a middle of the road five, but I've decided that that drive was that impressive by Raikkonen. It deserves six. Points are not going to be coming their way anytime soon though, are they, unfortunately? They're going to be really struggling. And it's a shame to say and to see that they're so down the order, especially the likes of Kimi Raikkonen, once a world champion down there. But it shows that he's still got some fire in his belly and a crazy race could get them back into the points. So fingers crossed for that and uh, hopefully they can hold on to this eighth place in the Constructors. It is really going to be every point and every position counts for that tail end of the team because if I end up getting some more points and, you know, it's going to be really close. So... Let's see how it goes, but Alfa Romeo are going to be struggling to get more points. Then we come to Haas with one point on the board, of course, courtesy of that masterclass, the strategic masterclass of the Hungarian Grand Prix. And they've picked up no points since firmly, firmly last when it comes to race pace. Qualifying pace, we've seen Q2 appearances from Roman Grosjean and Kevin Magnussen just missing out on a Q2 appearance at the last round. Um... But yeah, we've seen Q2 appearances, which has been good. And in the race, then Magnussen has a rocket ship start, always flies up the order, somewhat rotten, always up to around P13 as well. And then the tyres just give way and they just tumble down the order, drop like a stone. And then they're battling around for last position once again and struggling to pick up any sort of points. So, yeah, difficult one to judge Haas by. I think they've done okay. The pace isn't there, but... Oh, it's just difficult. It is just so difficult. Their race pace is not there at all. Their qualifying pace is there, but their race pace has gone begging, definitely. So, it's difficult for me to give them this, but I'm going to score Haas just four points. Sadly, I think that's all they really can deserve. I've not seen anything special by them these last three races. I've not seen a strategic masterclass. I've not seen anything from them, and all I've seen is the driver's more often than not, K-Mag in the race, outperforming what the car's capable of. But then the tyre degradation and the car itself just can't keep the race pace going and the tumble down the order. And then are often outraced by the Williams come the end and the Alfa Romeos, which is who they're racing around with. And yeah, a great shame. So just four points for Haas for these previous three races. 
And then we come to Williams, the only team yet to score on the board. And they've come close. We had a 12th place finish for Russell at the Silverstone Grand Prix, benefiting once again from all the punctures ahead and around. Um, but points have never been really possible. We've seen Q2 appearances once again by George, having a cracking effort at that. But then the race comes, and they just tumble down the order again. They're very much like Haas. The qualifying pace looks good. The race pace doesn't. And sadly, they've tumbled down the order. But more often than not, finished ahead of the Haas. I mean, George has especially finished ahead of the Haas cars come the end of the races. Um, Latifi's struggled a little bit, but I'm still reserving judgment on him for now because obviously he is a rookie driver and the only rookie in the field this season, which makes it even harder to judge him because you can't see how the other rookies are getting on in comparison. So for Latifi, I'm going to give him a bit more time. I think Williams are giving him all the time and everything he needs, which is good. As for George, yeah, qualifying's been good, race pace not so much, and it's just been a shame to see him really down there. And what we thought of in the early part of the season was, oh wow, Q2 appearances, we could really see him maybe scraping a point or two, has firmly gone to, yeah, they're going to get into Q2, but then they're going to tumble down to last. And again, very much like Alfa Romeo and Haas, I think they're going to need a bit of a lucky race and a bit of a miracle to pick up some points now. Um... I think they have more chance, though, to be fair, of maybe picking up a point than the Alphas and the Hassas, mainly because Alfa Romeo, if the pace isn't there on the day, they're not there at all. And with Haas, the tyre deg is so bad that they do tumble down behind the Williams come the end of the races more often than not. So I think if any one of those bottom three teams are going to pick up points again or at all, it's going to be Williams, but it's going to take a lucky, a lucky race result. So we're going to need another crazy race, a wet race, a high rate of attrition once again for Williams to pick up the points. So for Williams, I'm going to award him just four points as well. I don't think it's been a, a brilliant start to the season at all. And what we saw from the first three races and what we've seen in qualifying in these last three races, the race pace just hasn't delivered on them. So a shame, but I think four points is fair. So there you go guys, that was the teams for the team review of the Crawl Room. Let me know your thoughts and feedback down below if I scored any teams too high, any too low. If you think I've dug in a bit too much, been a bit harsh on some, not harsh enough on others. As always, this is just my opinion and my reflection on the last three races that have happened, comparing them to the first three races. So, you know, always open to opinions and suggestions and I look forward to seeing yours in the comments. And of course, I will see you next week, Monday at 4pm for the Belgium Grand Prix Crawl Room. So I'll see you then. Much love.